Hello everyone. Thanks for tuning in on this lovely Monday evening. Hello Betty. So make sure you pop on and when you pop on please say hi. Hey Lisa. So thought I would just share a little video with you this evening. And it just occurred to me there we go. Maybe that'll be better. There we go. Maybe now it's so blurry now. Okay. So when you pop on, please say hi. So I know you're here and if you have any questions. Oh, perfect, Betty. You just got home. Well, I just started. So perfect. I was watching a video that Peoria Players put on this evening in preparation of Giving Tuesday tomorrow. And um, I was in it. So that was cool to see me sing one of my favorite songs in the whole wide world. That was a lot of fun. All right, so I just wanted to show you the covers of these catalogs. I cannot show them until January 5th, but they are a whole lot of fun, and there's some beautiful products in here. So if you are a customer of mine, you should have received the or will be receiving these if you haven't yet, soon, soon, I'm told. Okay, so those will be coming. I can order these tomorrow. As a demonstrator, we can order tomorrow, and I cannot wait. Um, that'll be fun. I'll be getting me some goodies to start playing with so I can show you guys the ins and outs of the new catalog. So very excited about that. So tonight we are going to be working with one of my favorite stamp sets, Perfectly Plaid. And I just love this. I love this tree. This is my favorite tree. I love that pine cone. I love that tree. This Merry Christmas. I have used so many times. Let me show you it. I have used it like so many times look at that it is so stained photopolymer stamps do stain and that is okay they still work and i love them i love that merry christmas in that one anyway so we are going to be using the perfectly plaid and the winter snow embossing folder which are our this one this is our august to december mini catalog it will only be good until the end of december so if you want anything in here and you haven't ordered it yet, I would highly encourage you to get it because toward the end of the sales period, um, if it's gone, it's gone. So make sure you order it if you had any want at all. We will also be featuring this product right here, the Plaid Tidings Designer Series Paper. I went ahead and pulled some of that. Okay, so just show you really quickly we have this one. I don't know. This side looks patriotic to me. This one has Basic Black, Blackberry Bliss, Bumblebee, Cajun Craze, Cherry Cobbler, Cinnamon Cider, Crumb Cake, which is this, Mango Melody, Melon Mambo, Misty Moonlight, Pretty Peacock, Pumpkin Pie, Rich Razzleberry, Seaside Spray, Shaded Spruce, and Whisper White. This is one of my favorites too. There we go. These two have the rich razzleberry in them both. They're so pretty. Rich razzleberry. Did I just show you that one? Ah, I guess I did. Anyway, there must be one I missed then. At first I thought these two were the same, but they are not. Oh, love that side. These, except for really this particular one right here, I could see using it all year long. So even though it's in the holiday catalog there, it doesn't mean you have to just use it for holidays or Christmas. There are several products in here. I want to even showcase this one right here. The celebrations, uh, the dies right here. Let's see, are they on the next page? They are. The celebration labels dies. There are these nesting dies that are beautiful. I've seen so many people use these. And you know, if you don't love the stamp set, just get the dies and use them. You can always use sprigs. You can always use hearts. And then those would make pretty um, accents for your paper. So there are several products in here that I have ordered that I plan on using long after Christmas. There's some red felt. There's red and green um, foil. There's some, oh, there's just so many products in there. 
Love it. All right, and we will also be using, it is in our annual catalog on page 60, is the perfectly plaid um, stamp set. Now, some of these, as you can see, are outlined. So if you ever are looking through the catalog and you see that they're outlined in this very vanilla color, that means they have a punch that goes along with them. So it has a punch, which we are going to use. If you're ever in the catalog and you see something that's outlined in this color, that means there's a die that cuts it out. So let me just turn to a random page. Here we go. Last a lifetime. That means this image can be cut out with dies. That one, that one, and that one. Plus there's other ones that go with that one. And then if I look on this page, there it is again. That means there's a punch. So in case you're ever looking through the catalog and you don't know what's going on, there you go. All right. So tonight's card I cannot show you yet because I haven't finished creating it you're going to see me create. So if you have any questions or just want to comment, please just feel free. All right. So I have some shaded spruce, some shaded spruce ink. We're going to also be using our adhesive backed snowflakes, which apparently has a dog hair on it. And we're going to be using this side. And you can tell I really like this side because I'm almost out. So I will be well, actually, I already have more, but I'm probably still going to get some more. What in the world are these two pieces? Well, you're about to find out. Okay, so my card base is Cherry Cobbler. It is eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And I went ahead and used my bone folder, but I'm going to again just to get it a little flatter. Okay. Then I am going to use this piece. Of shaded spruce now this piece of shaded spruce has uh, has seen better days hasn't it but let me just tell you the punch we we're going to use I did right there and this was in my scrap pieces of paper clearly I had punched a circle you know nobody's going to see this because we are going to put a piece of whisper white that I have run through with my winter snow embossing folder and once I mat it up and layer it, you are not going to see it. So often I'll do that, and it just saves some paper. So, hey, Mom, Mom's popped in. So again, use your middle, especially if you're using a foil. Foil is expensive. Cut the middle out or cut a few shapes out of the middle. No one's going to see this. And it actually makes your card just a slight bit lighter, too, which might help with postage if you're doing lots of layers which we aren't particularly tonight, but. All right, then I tried my best to find some cherry cobbler ribbon, um, but I was unsuccessful. So I do have some cherry cobbler ribbon, but it is not current. So you cannot get this ribbon, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm trying to decide which way I like it. I think I like it with the red showing better. We're gonna put that right through the middle-ish, ish, okay? And with my punch, I punched a shaded spruce tree. I punched a tree out of one of those plaids. And again, you can use any of them. And then I punched one using the stamp from that set. This is my probably my favorite stamp. So I planned on layering them like that. I'm gonna put those two on dimensionals. And then I stamped Merry Christmas. And with the tailored tag punch, I punched it out. That is going to go there-ish. Now, what are these pieces? Well, if I put them back together, you can see. They are the Taylor tag right there. And what I did is I cut it right down the middle and I am going to put it on the back of my Merry Christmas like that. So I'm gonna leave just a little bit of a border and you'll see there's a little bit of a gap in the middle and we'll glue it down and it'll look very pretty. So that'll be there-ish, ish. And then I figured I would sprinkle some snowflakes around for a simple, super easy Christmas card that took me uh, all of about five minutes to put together. Um, really quick and easy. And for our center, I am going to use a full piece of shaded spruce. I do not want to 
use the punches on the inside because if I'm writing, even if I have the white on the top of it, it it'll get caught. So for your inner matte layers, do not salvage some of the middle. Unless you really don't plan on writing, I guess, which might not. So I will save that. And I did use shaded spruce ink, but I went ahead and I did everything. So really it's assembly tonight and chatting. So if you wanna chat with me, again, please check out peoriaplayers.org and check out their video. Um, if you catch around minute 17 minutes and 17 seconds, you're gonna see a familiar face. If you've ever seen my face, I guess that is. Um, and you might even hear me sing and be dressed up for the first time since quarantine started. So yeah, not a lot of uh, dressing up going on around here, let me tell you. So I actually put this thing called makeup on and a dress and jewelry. I mean, I can't even remember the last time I did that. So probably March because I directed a, a musical the weekend before lockdown happened. And that was probably the last time I wore anything like that. All right, so you see that I did not put glue in the middle because of my holes and I just, just didn't want to run the risk of getting it over a hole there and then sticking it to my paper in the back because I want to put my ribbon on. Okay, I do want to put it as centered as I possibly can. Okay. Now I know that this, this piece is four and an eighth. So the top of my grid paper up here is a zero line. I really like that. So if it's four and an eighth, that means if I go two and sixteenths, I can find the exact middle. And I'm going to just go ahead and make a little pencil mark with my pencil. And I'm just going to go whoop -a -doop -a -doop. Again, you do not have to do this. You could totally just eyeball it. I usually do, but I just feel like being picky tonight. So again, I have a choice. I can go this way or this way with this ribbon. This ribbon is available in Mossy Meadow, I believe, right now. So I guess I could have used Mossy Meadow, but I really wanted to use this paper and it had shaded spruce in it. So I didn't want to clash. All right, so I will show you one way of putting your ribbon on a card. There are many, many, many ways. Feel free to use whichever way works best for you. I use our mini glue dots and I put one on this end and I pull off. And then I put one on the other end and I pull it off or not. And it pressed down a little bit. Sometimes you just dig your fingernail in it and then it, or not, or apparently this one is just not working for me. Okay, just needed a little extra talking, a little extra, you know, maybe some threatening, no. Okay, so find my little center line that I made. It's very faint, but it's there. I'll put the middle of my ribbon there and wrap it around and then do the same thing on the other side. Pull it tight, but not so tight that you're, you know, folding your, your paper, just tight so that it stays. Um, I know a lot of people would put glue runner or something along the back of the ribbon. I like that it's a little loose. That doesn't bother me. I actually like that. And then I often will do this. I will put my card using my grid paper and I will check, did I get it even? As you can see, I did not. So I'm going to bump this side up just a little bit, bump this side down a little bit. And there we go. Now it's ready to glue onto my card base. So it looks like a mess on the back, but that's okay. I always put a lot, a lot of glue right there to help my ribbon stay down so it doesn't slip out. Sometimes if you just use tape or tape runner, that ribbon will eventually work itself out. But glue, it just doesn't. All right, so there we go so far. So that is my basic card base. I love to mat using an eighth of an inch increments. A lot of people use quarter of an inch and occasionally I will. I really like the look of just a little bit of color. I don't know why, I just like that. Also, if this was designer series paper, that means this would be an even four inches, which is easy to cut in your 12 by 12 paper because then it is an even. Okay, then I'm going to figure out how I want my trees. I think I want that one peeking just a little bit over. This one is gonna be on dimensionals here. And 
and this one on dimensionals there. That looks good to me. So I'm gonna take those two off. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna glue this one down. I'm gonna put a little glue down here. Okay, now you'll notice that was gonna overlap my ribbon. So what I'm gonna do at the top up here, probably should have done it first before I put the glue on, but that's okay. I'm gonna use my glue dot. There we go. So now when I put it down, it's gonna overlap. And this part will stay. And I've got my glue down there. Okay. Now, dimensionals. I love dimensionals. Okay, I've got dimensionals. Now, I needed just a little bit on, on a project I was doing yesterday, day before. So I just cut a little bit. I just needed a little bitty Thin. We do sell these in strips, foam strips, and those are great. I just haven't ordered them yet. I'm just using these, so my dryer is done. My son's sheets are clean. Okay, he got a new bed. This, well, you know, I don't, does anybody even know what day it is? I mean, really. He got a new bed sometime sometime since lockdown, um, I don't remember. Anyway, had to get him some new sheets. And so they are clean and ready to go. He had that other one for quite some time. It was a big kind of bunk bed, it was right near the ceiling. And let's just say as he's gotten older, it's a little harder, it was a little harder to get in and out of the bed because he's gotten so tall. So we got him just one that has a little bit of storage under it. And it's a full size, not a twin. So he really likes that, a lot more room. Okay, so I do this quite often with a lot of my punches. If I want, like this is boring. I just wanted a little, little something, especially white on white, that's hard to see. So what I did, again, I punched it out and then I just cut it as close up the middle as I can. And then I'm going to take it and put it on the back. So it just gives a little bit of dimension. Um, I do this with so many of the punches. The Really, there's not a punch you couldn't do this with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on this side. Definitely use glue. That way you can have some wiggle room. And I am going to line it up on my sides first. Give it, go like that so it's even. Okay, now I need a little bit more than that. So I'm just gonna Take it out just a little bit. That's why you use glue, so you have a little bit of wiggle room. I'm going, my goal is however much is here, that's about-ish how much I want. Okay, that looks good. I'm gonna slide this down just a smidgen. There we go. And that glue right there, I'm gonna do this with my finger now. And it goes away. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And then there should be that gap in the middle on the back, but no one will see that. But make sure you use glue. I love glue. Okay. So about the same amount on this side as well. Again, don't need to get out your ruler or anything like that. Just eyeball it ish. Ish. There we go. Now, if you want to get real picky, you could cut out another one, another of the shaded spruce and cut it this way and make it go so you'd have some on this side. I, I think this looks just fine and I'm not going to worry about it. All right, I want those also on dimensionals. So I'm going to get those back out here. Pop those. We'll put two on the bottom and two on the top. I love this winter snow background, one of my favorites that we currently have, one of my favorite embossing folders. The other one would be the Tasteful Textures. I love it so much. All right, so we're gonna put it, I want it just barely overlapping the ribbon. There we go. Okay, now we need some of those snowflakes. We're going to use three, I believe. Let me get my pokey tool out here. And I love these adhesive backed snowflakes because 
the adhesives already on there. I don't have to mess with the glue dot. I don't have to mess with a tiny bit of glue or anything like that. I think I'm gonna do is we're gonna put one there. And one over there. Again, there's no, and we'll put one here. There's no reasoning. I just like to kind of make a triangle with my three. And if I don't make a triangle, I'll put them like right here in the corner or up here, like three in a row. Occasionally I'll go with five, but usually it's three. Okay, so there's my card so far. Now, we gotta have a mill, because right now, that's not gonna do. Okay, so again, I told you I already cut the shaded spruce matte, but I didn't show you is what I did with the middle. So I took the greeting, may this special season be wrapped in love and joy from, again, the perfectly plaid stamp set. And I used this tree and I put it in the corner. And I'm apparently shedding tonight. Sorry about that. You're probably all like, wow, she's got a hair on her sleeve. Nope, sorry about that. Okay, so I just need to assemble this card pretty much is what I'm doing tonight. All right, hope you all have enjoyed this card. Again, it's super quick, super easy. You can do this with other punches as well. Just use an embossing folder for the background. A punch or two in different colors and different textures. You could even use a punch to cut out something that's been embossed um, with a sentiment and some embellishments. And I love putting ribbons on my card like that. I think it just adds another layer of texture because we've got color, we've got patterns. Texture is another way that we can make our cards interesting. And I just love pretty ribbons. Pretty ribbons. Love that Willie Nelson song. Anyway, pretty papers of blue. I've been listening to that one a lot lately. I love me some Willie Nelson. All righty. So, I'm open this puppy up. Ba -doo, ba -doo. All right, and we have a little bit of border around. Do remember, key to getting it centered is don't press down until you are confident you have it exactly where you want it. Then press down. And there we go. Now, that's my card, but we need an envelope. Let me grab an envelope here. Get one of those out. There we go. All right, so there's my envelope. You know what I think I'm gonna do? Put my glue lid on. That's what I'm gonna do first. Always do that. Hmm. I haven't used this stamp much. Now, these two can go together. You can do this one in a darker color and then this actually stamps over the top. So you can fill these in, you can leave it blank. You can hand color it with the blends or the Stampin' Rights because it's pretty small or even a Stampin' Blend. Um, wow, blanking marker. I'm looking at them. Do any of you have these? Stamping up blender pens, there we go. So basically you dip it in any of our ink pads and then it colors. I use it quite often because it has a tiny, tiny tip. A little bit smaller than our Stampin' Blends. So if I just need a smaller area colored, I use these. Plus, you can give different shading and stuff. I, I love them. Okay, so I think we're gonna use this stamp and we're not gonna fill it in. We're just going to do, we're just gonna put it on the envelope. Ooh. Okay, um, I gotta quit. I'm just gonna, I'm just going crazy here. We're gonna use this one too. The North Pole Delivery. Okay, so let me get my blocks again. Didn't have those ready, that's okay. So we're gonna put our North Pole Delivery, we're gonna put it kind of crooked like that. And then my other one right there. Okay, so we're going to get my Shaded Spruce ink out, which we haven't used yet. I'm a big fan of our Stampin' Pierce matte anytime I use photopolymer stamps, so I am going to go ahead and get that out. Just gives it a little extra cushion. Okay. I don't know if I've used this one yet, so I'm making sure it's well inked. There we go. That'll be the front. And you know what I'm going to do? 
on the back, I am going to put right across here, North Pole Delivery. Now, I know I have not used this stamp yet, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get a scratch piece of paper over here and just make sure that it works. Okay, good. You can tell I've been doing something with the Peony Garden, Peony Garden, whichever you prefer to say. I generally say Peony, but some people say Peony. You say potato, I say potato. Actually, I say potato. Okay, we'll just put that there just for a little extra oomph. Okay, now I am done. Okay, so that is a super quick card. I came up with it very quickly, and I think whoever gets this is going to feel super special. There are other things I could do. I could add some of our, ooh, ooh, let me show you those. Mm, let me get those out. The Holiday Rhinestones, <laughs> which I have used so much of. I barely don't have any red ones left at all. Um, the Holiday Rhinestone, this is Shaded Spruce. So I could have used a few of those around. Yeah, I've, I've massacred this one. Um, and I know it says holiday, but there is nothing necessarily holiday about Cherry Cobbler, Coastal Cabana, Shaded Spruce, Night of Navy, and Pumpkin Pie. I used the Pumpkin Pie one, so you can see. In a lot of my um, Halloween things I did this year, and my Thanksgiving cards, I used the Pumpkin Pie quite a bit. I use Night of Navy, all, I, I use them all. Clearly, I need to start using some more Coastal Cabana. I've got a ton of those left. Well, I'm going to have to think of something on it. Anyway, could have used that instead of the snowflakes as well. That would have looked wonderful. I could have used the red rhinestones. That would have looked good as well. So, thank you so much for watching. And if you are interested in any of these products, please check out um, stampingup.com and be sure to select Amanda Bach as your demonstrator. And I look forward to sharing more videos with you soon. All right, bye-bye.